So if we have an idea of what uh, of what we're going to create, then we can start to get into writing this code. And we've got we've got the experience now to start with it. And we saw that the last time that we were here, uh, we used jQuery Mobile to to get up and running quickly to this point. Remember, we went over to the Wikipedia. Well, we did it together, and then we went over to the Wikipedia article, and there was the example that we did line by line to kind of understand it a bit more. And then we went over to jQueryMobile.com to see the full documentation and features of jQuery Mobile. Well, um, if we if we have let's say a template.html file that we develop, we can then quickly create multiple projects based on that template. That's one way to do it. You have a master HTML file, template HTML file that's just blank. It has a general design, and then we can get started quickly. That's one way to do it. Let me show you this other way. Um, there's many websites or many uh, providers out there that are starting to put out tools for us to develop mobile projects quickly. Um, one of the ones that I like to use, you can actually check it out here. Let's go open your web browser, and let's go to this site, codiqa.com. I've never heard it pronounced in real life except by myself when I teach this class, and I call it Kodika. I don't know if that's the official name. Kodika. Kodika. Uh, Kodika. I don't know. I call it Kodika. C-O-D-I-Q-A. Kodika is a company that has a product, so this is actually not free, but there's a demo and a trial version. But this is software that helps us create jQuery mobile projects quickly with a nice drag-and-drop interface. Of course, it will allow us to edit our code and add to it. Um, but like any good tool that gives us a starting point, I don't want to have to write all my code again from scratch. Maybe I'm going to develop or rely on the concept of templates and such, but that's pretty cumbersome, actually. So there is software, and this is not the only one. We can look up Kodika competitors, and there'll be plenty, plenty of software out there that lets you do this. I think you can even there's an even even kind of a version of this built into the modern versions of Dreamweaver. So if you've uh, ever used Dreamweaver throughout the years, in the last few years they've really started to go for HTML5 and all that mobile cool stuff. And I believe the latest versions of Dreamweaver Creative Cloud 2015 have a version of this. But it's um, going to be very useful. Uh, they've been around a few years. I've ta taught this class for a few years, and they've improved their tool all, every every version. And basically, there's two versions of it. There is the the web version and the download version. Uh, so if we have a web version, we can log in to our account on Kodika and access our project from any web-enabled computer. So I can start my project at my house, go to my friend's house, and log into my account and keep working. There's also the version that I can download and install on my laptop. Then, of course, I need to have my laptop to use my Kodika software. And here on the preview, we see, well, we can easily add buttons and footers and links and all of that. And we have, very, and we have a preview, various options. So instead of memorizing all of the code, is it data role? Is it data rel? You know, all of that. It's in a nice WYSIWYG interface. What you see is what you get. And you can easily switch. Um, to the code view, so there's a little code button up there, and you can go in and edit code that maybe it's faster to do than finding a button. This is always the case with WYSIWYG editors. If you don't know what WYSIWYG means, it's what you see is what you get. So the thing with those is that oftentimes you're able to find the icons and the menus and such that you need, and sometimes it's just faster to type quickly, data dash roll equals page. You know, with practice, you might be able to type your code faster than trying to find the right screen, click the right button, just type it in the code. Uh, so it basically runs on all devices. It's cross-platform, Windows. Um, I mean, the software is Windows or Mac. It runs on all devices, drag and drop, jQuery mobile. Uh, it will be able to connect with external services. Save, share, edit, visual coding. So it makes it sound like I get a kickback from recommending these guys. I don't, and I'm not affiliated with the company at all, but I've used them. Um, 
for a while and I think they've got a really good product. So to get a quick demo of it, let's try this. Under Get Started, there's Try the Demo. Click Try the Demo. This works best on, uh, it looks like on Google Chrome, but if you're using other browsers, it should work okay. Uh, you might get a pop-up here. This is the demo. You can play around with the tool, try out everything, but it's just a taste. In the full version, you can add themes, upload images, export directly to PhoneGap, also known as Cordova, for mobile, design, uh, for mobile projects, and a whole lot more. Okay, great. So I've got a screen so far here. You know, I can click on my nav bar at the bottom. And I have various options on the right side. On the left side, I can see a home screen, an example screen, platforms. Let's say just to play with this, not too much because I'm I'm gonna I need to show you something. But on the top we've got pages. I can create a brand new page and call it about or a brand new screen. So I've got a brand new empty screen. I can then put in uh, a button, just drag and drop, and I have options for the button, such as it saying, you know, sign in. What does it link to? What kind of animation? Does it open a new window? All of that. So just simply selecting options. And uh, at the bottom right corner, I have an, a button that says code. Pop that open. And then I'm seeing, well, what is what is the pretty interface doing? It's writing code, of course. Div data roll page. That sounds familiar. Uh, data roll tab bar. Well, we haven't talked about that one yet, but that's how to make tabs at the bottom of your screen. Um, this code here is, is focused on the jQuery mobile code. It's not giving you all of the code, is it? It's not giving you the head, um, the meta code, and all of that. It's, it's the jQuery code, jQuery mobile. We have CSS, we have JavaScript. So we can edit this code also. The point is I can simply drag and drop content, quickly create our, our project. This is obviously not going to create the whole thing. Uh, this is more for rapid prototyping, for quickly creating our interface. If we had then the full version of Kodika, uh, we would have more features, and one of the best features is download the code. And we can download it and get back into good old Notepad++ and do other things that we want. But this demo version, if I try to download, it says, thanks for trying the demo. See the pricing. So like any good dealer, the first hit is free. And then after that, we see the price. I'm going to go look at the price, actually. You can download the desktop version for seven days, seven-day trial, uh, Mac version, Windows version. Let's see, price. price? Yes. It's, it's, it's right under the button where it says download today. Yeah. A little right there, buy coding today. All right, here we go. So it's $79 per license. Uh, that's not, uh, you know, that you have to keep resubscribing. It's just uh, $79 for a license. And then that means you'll be able to install it on your one computer. For one No, like I said, it's not a yearly thing. Uh, it's just a, a one-time price of $79. You can install it on, on your Windows or your Mac computer. I believe only one, because you just bought one license. We can look at the details. But the point is, yeah, it's $80 software. But really, if you're in the world of web design and graphic design and, and, and all of that, you know that an $80 app is a steal, because Photoshop costs $500. Premiere costs $700. You know... Um, What's that big, um, like, 3D Studio Max, that's like, what, $2,000. So, 
So software can be very, very expensive. $80 one-time fee for unlimited use is a great price. Um, but you can also subscribe to those. You can subscribe to any Adobe, uh, uh, and it, it costs like nineteen ninety nine uh, for the student and teacher app per month. But that's Adobe. This is Kodika. Right. And you're paying for Photoshop or Oh yes, yes, I see your point. Yes, you could buy the full flat rate version of Photoshop, which they're going to remove eventually. And then you have the subscription, which is like only $20 a month, but you keep paying and paying. And this actually has that as well, because you have buy once now, the desktop version, or buy the web version. If you get the web version, then you get the most recent version, for as long as you pay, of course. And here we have $16 a month, billed annually. So a little bit of math here. 16 times 12. So $192 for one year, and then it goes on and on. Well, what you get for that is you can have three projects, one user, one gigabyte of storage, and on and on. So there's individual, small team, big team, enterprise. And you see the price going up and up, and eventually you get to enterprise, and it's basically don't ask. Question? Yeah, I saw that first, actually, and I thought, okay, forget it. And then we somehow found that 79 So. What is the difference, and why would anybody pay monthly when you can just buy, buy it? The big thing about the monthly one is that you have all of these features, such as team collaboration, where if I need to work with multiple people on my team, well, I only bought one license, so it's on one computer. If we buy the web version, everyone can work on it on their own, their own computer. We have version control, which means that I'm editing the code and that I don't accidentally erase someone else's code. Because if we're all working on the one file, that's going to happen. Version control lets us keep track of changes, and they won't conflict. What else? SSL security, live preview add-ons, jQuery mobile. So the big things, I would say, is team collaboration and version control. And yeah, it adds up nearly $200 for one year. But um, yeah, I do definitely also have a hard time saying, yeah, the online version. Get that. The $79 one-time fee one might work really well. Maybe you don't get the latest version. If you want Kodika version 4.0, you have to pay again another $50. I, I don't know. But um, those are two big options. Yes? How, how complex can you make it? I mean, is it just like if you have a coffee shop and you want to do a basic app, or can, you, can it be very expensive like Yelp or something? It can, be, it can be extensive to a degree, definitely. Um, the, the little uh, ads over here somewhere, I saw that it said that it can connect with um, over here, connect with services you love. So it, it does have APIs and such to connect, or access to APIs where you can connect to external content like databases, which is the big thing about them. You know, Yelp runs on a database. All the modern websites run on a database. It's their Salesforce. So um, you can connect to external uh, resources. Now, we have the seven day trial, um, but the, we also have another option because I've been using Kodika for a few years and I've seen them grow and um, they're so big at the moment that they've joined forces which means they were bought by Ionic which is a competitor of jQuery mobile basically and it's just another another way to create mobile friendly apps so this Ionic company um, bought Kodika and so they, they saw that it was valuable now, before that change, there was the completely, it was still in beta a couple years ago, and, there, and everything about it was completely free. And then once it got out of beta, well, they needed to make a little money. So we have the $79 version and the $16 a month version. Well, I was using Kodika, the free version, to teach in, this, in these classes. And then when I was prepping the class, a few semesters ago, I checked my links and I came here and I saw, oh, no more free version. So I, um, I contacted the Kodika team on, on Twitter and I said, hey, um, is there like a student version because I'm teaching this in class? And they told me, yes, there is student pricing. I, I don't know if we can find the price quickly here, but there is student pricing. If you confirm that you are a student, you get it for like um, half off or, or something. They changed the deals. Uh, they gave me uh, a whole free year of access to the latest version. So if you, you can get student pricing. 
but also they said you can also use our older version which is completely free and you can download the code because this demo version looks amazing but we cannot download our code so they gave me access to a secret link that I'll give you guys so that we can uh, create our project download it and then continue with it in notepad plus plus so that secret version whatever we did here don't worry about it we're gonna lose it the secret version I don't have the address memorized but I don't need to because I have a delicious account Has anyone heard of delicious.com delicious.com is a website where you where you can save bookmarks so let's say you're at your home computer you find amazing bookmarks you save them in your web browser you want to come to class and show me that show me that bookmark but you didn't bring your computer so you can't show your links well delicious allows you to save your bookmarks online and access them from whatever and share them and see what's trending and discover new ones and uh, look at favorites and all of that so I've been collecting bookmarks throughout the years and I saved the Codica free preview secret version here you're just gonna have to scroll down you see dates on the side you're gonna need to scroll down to January 2014 so scroll down to January 15 2014 you see a link that's Kodika prototypes delicious well I know that you can save your bookmarks and sync them on Chrome and Firefox and all the browsers but they're private they're your bookmarks you have to log in to see your bookmarks I like delicious because you can make all your links public and share them with anyone and and find and discover more links and so here Kodika prototypes is the super cool Kodika editor secret link and then that has tags so I can search other things on delicious that are also tagged jQuery jQuery mobile tool so I like delicious. It's kind of like a half a bookmarking tool and half a social network because here I can discover more links. So you want to go over to the prototypes, the Kodika prototypes, and then together we'll start to put, uh, we'll start to design our our app. You can move ahead if you'd like, but I recommend follow along because of course I want to guide us in a certain way. We're going to develop our app in the prototype. We're going to download the code together, and then we're going to take it into Notepad and then keep adding to it and working toward our project. So click on Kodika Prototypes. Basically, the address is, which I never remember, kodika.com slash embed slash editor. It's going to give us the tools that we saw previously couple of them are missing like the YouTube video and the newest stuff like that but we can still add it ourselves the big idea here is once we've developed our prototype of our app at the top right corner we have download it'll give us all the HTML so if you don't see a download button it's gonna be your web browser so if you don't see download switch web browsers but based on my wireframe here, we've got these ideas of screens that we're going to design. So we can start designing them. And we have pretty much the full control. But the problem is that there's no way to save. So if you're designing the project and you go to another screen, and come back it'll reset you lose everything if you have the full paid version of Kodika obviously that doesn't happen but we're using the prototype version I'm just saying don't navigate to another screen or you're gonna lose your work don't refresh the screen you're gonna lose your work but basically uh, I the browser that you're using or like if I had paint open I want to see something if I go to paint we do this for refresh just in the browser <laughs> So first I'm going to drag a header to the top of my screen here. I drag the header. I have a few simple options, such as the theme and fixed. Remember, data dash pos position equals fixed. We'll keep the heading at the, the header at the top from scrolling around. 
So after you drop the header in, switch it to fixed mode, yes. That way the content in the middle here will scroll and your header will not scroll away. To remind us, we can look at inspect code on the bottom right corner and we see right there. That's familiar. Data role page, data theme, data role header, data position fixed. On the bottom right corner, you have inspect code. I want to design a nav bar. I, got, I want three buttons at the top. This one's uh, a little confusing for people the first time here, but notice we've got a nav bar widget or a nav bar component. It has three icons. We can add a bunch more if we want, of course, but what you want to do is drag it and be a little careful here because if you drag it, you can put it, you can, you can actually put it above your text, which doesn't make sense. You can put it below your text, which will work, or you can put it outside of the text. That'll work too, but then you've got that dead space. The top header ends and then your nav bar begins and you've got that empty space. You may want that. You may want that for design purposes. But I'm going to drag it so that it's still inside the header, right below the word header. I drop it in and I've only got one button. Do not drag more nav bars. You want one nav bar. And then on the tools over here, the options, we currently have one button in our nav bar. One item, one button. How do you think we add more items to our nav bar? One button. New button. Yes. So we want to add a couple new buttons. And now here I've got these generic buttons. I dragged the button um, just so that I know that it's below the header. You just maybe have to move your mouse till you find it, but you should have it right below it. Try dragging it down a little bit further. Is there an undo just in case? No. Can you delete what you just You can delete. So there's no undo. But if you want to delete, notice you can click on an object. You can click on the object and then click the, the little check mark to, to remove it. The little X. So you just have to make sure, now that we've got these elements, you have to make sure that you've selected the appropriate element. You want to click on it and then its options appear. If I don't, if you don't see the same options that I have, you don't have the right thing selected. So make sure you've got the right object selected. And then here I've got button, button, button. If you open that, you can then change the text. I'm going to have a home button. I'm going to have an art button. and a PC button. We can obviously be doing this straight in the code, straight in Notepad. And we will get back to Notepad. But here we can quickly create this. What do you mean by R again? This app is going to display classes for this college. In this project, we're going to display the, uh, the available art classes, the available computer classes. other options that I have here. Okay, text is initially active. Well, this says no, and it's not, even though we don't have an undo, it's not so scary, I think, for you to maybe change options here and there and maybe figure out what does that do. So when I activate is initially active to yes, notice it becomes highlighted. So this is the way, and if I look on my code, it'll tell me exactly what that did. But this is a way for a button to become highlighted, and this is what is known as good user experience. Because there's a theory that every time someone visits a brand new website or uses a brand new app, they have to learn it all again. 
they have to learn where is the back button where is the home button what does this button do when you download a brand new app when you downloaded you know the Instagram app for the first time maybe you didn't really know how to use it when you downloaded uh, camera plus how does this work what does that button do there's a phase of exploration to figure out how something works and so that's the whole art and science of user experience how to make using an app the easiest way for the user what's the experience so one little simple thing here that we can do to help the user is to use the initially active state which simply means if I'm on the home screen, I want the home button to look like it's active so that I don't confuse people. Am I on the home screen or not? I can click it. If we were to go over to the art screen, I would want the art button to be highlighted to let people know you're in the art section. To not confuse people, can I still click the art button even though I went to the art section? Did I click on the art section? We'll know about it once we've got that highlighted. So something as basic as that, make the button active. Active looking. Um, this is the free prototype version, so one of the big limitations of it is we cannot create more than one screen. I can't create the home screen, then the art screen, then the PC screen and link them together in the prototype. I can obviously do that in the paid version. We're not using the paid version. So what we're going to do to get around this is we're going to grab all of the components that we need and put them all on the home screen. When we take it into Notepad, then we will divide them into the appropriate screens. So our home screen will look very cluttered because basically we're going to steal all the components. And then we're going to put it properly in Notepad. So this link to page, don't even work, bother about it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything in the prototype screen, in the Kodika prototype. Theme, don't worry about this because this is using the old theme, uh, the, the jQuery Mobile 1.3 code where we had these different themes. So just leave it as is default. Icon, we can add some icons here. This does not list the latest um, jQuery 1.4 icon set. It doesn't list all 40 icons. It's got the classic 20 or whatever. But we have enough icons here that we can you know, put in the home icon. <laughs> you can decide whatever icons you want, but let's say for art, I like the grid. <coughs> so we'll choose icons. Transition, we've got all the transitions. They're, they haven't changed them yet. I'll leave them as fade for the moment, but we've got the other ones listed. We don't, if we no longer want the button, we can delete it. And if we want to change where the position of the icons are, we've got that at the top. Icons on top, icons on bottom, left or right. I would recommend the top or the bottom placement because you might not realize it, but your fingers are actually fatter than you think. So if we use the left or the right position, now we have a much smaller target to hit. And that's also part of user experience. My big old finger here is going to miss and click something else if it's that small. So I would recommend the top or the bottom placement. Either will work. The default is fine. Art screen, initially active, no. No link, no theme, icon choose whatever icons you want. I'm going with grid and then the PC button. I'm going to go with the gear. We're going to choose better icons later, but for the moment I just want to put some icons here. So our design A had a header a nav, content, and footer. Content is assumed, so we don't drop anything in for content. It's already there. We need a footer. So be careful here. Drag the footer. Make sure you don't drop it into the header. Then you've got a footer and a header. And don't drop it there because it's still in the header. You want to drop it as close to the bottom as you can, and then you'll get the footer. It's going to look a little weird in the editor. It's not going to go all the way down. Don't worry about it. It will work when we get it over to... Um, Notepad. And there's really nothing to change here. We can change the text if we want, but we'll do it in Notepad. So 
header, footer, navbar. Footer. It'll just be one. It'll stack two. It'll stack one on top of the other. Yes. It doesn't give me anything because this is not valid. This is not a fully complete valid HTML file. There's nothing about dot type. There's nothing about head and body and the meta tags and such. So this is only what would be in the body tag. So it's missing everything else. Besides, that's why it doesn't work as a real HTML file. But when we're done with it, we'll click download, and that will give us the complete HTML file. All right, so I'm going to drag a heading. This is the uh, a block of text. It's an H1. I'm just going to drag an H1 into the content area. Again, be careful. Don't drag it into the header. Put it in the content area. Nothing really to do there. Just drag that in as a placeholder. And then I'm going to have collapsible. So this collapsible element is going to be opening and closing to show us content. And this has its own little nuances and such. So I'm going to drag collapsible. Drag the collapsible component. We saw how it worked in the example. It has a name, then it can open and close, and content inside of it. The weird thing is that once you drag a copy of it here, it then is collapsed no. I would recommend collapsed yes, because we want this to be closed until someone opens it. It's like pulling open a drawer. If it's already automatically open, your screen is going to look more cluttered, and it's going to show people something they don't want to see until they... We want to let them see it until they want to see it. Again, user experience. Header theme default, content theme default, those are fine. I'll add a couple new sections. And every time I add a new section, it comes out open for some reason. Three in total, because our example project will have Art 101, 102, and 103. So in the text, I'm just making up some f some fake art class names or whatever. The concept of that is that when someone visits this art, again, this is going to go in the art screen, but we cannot create an art screen in the Kodika prototype. Yeah. I'm having all the components, and then I can work with them later. And when someone visits art, I can click on they can click on the art button, and it pops open to show you pictures or video, whatever information. And collapsible, we've got another one called list view. So I'm going to drag a list view element, and this time be careful that you don't drop the list view into the collapsible, because you could have a list view in a collapsible. You can have a collapsible in a collapsible, but you want to drag it so that it's outside, below. And that's made out of dividers and buttons. So I can use the divider to to make a section of basic computer classes, intermediate computer classes, advanced computer classes. And then within each of those sections, I have then a button to show me the info on computers 101, 102, computers 201, 202, etc. So I'll create a new divider. See that there's a divider. These are not clickable. The buttons are clickable. So I want a new button there. Just for fun, I'll add two buttons there. We can always edit this later. I've got one divider, one button, one divider, two buttons. 
Don't worry about naming those yet. We'll do them over at Notepad. Because I'm a little paranoid here. Don't accidentally click that back button on your mouse and lose it all. Hmm. Area longer. I can't see. It doesn't scroll. Can you visit the section here? I'd say not to go back and Well, uh, let me let me answer your question one moment. Uh, did I finish answering your question? No, it's not scrolling. Now we have one selected. What you can do is uh, try to zoom out on your web browser, press Control minus Does that zoom you out so you can see a little bit more? She's referring to within the actual demo itself. Yeah, no, you just haven't added content yet, so just try to find something that You had the same issue? That you don't have any scroll there? I'm not sure what to say about that. Uh, it doesn't work to zoom out. To zoom in. Mm, maybe try clicking on another piece and then it might wake it up. I don't know. If you can't quite scroll, that's okay because eventually, you know, just drop your pieces in. They don't have to be in the same order as this. Drop your pieces in and then we'll download it into Notepad and then we'll be able to proceed. You get your item for All right. Um, notice I skipped link. I skipped button, link, and image. We can add those later. Map is not the same kind of map that we're going to use in our project that I showed you in the demo. That will just create a static uh, map tile, a, a drawing. It's just you can put in an address and such, and it'll show an address, but it's not live at all like the one we're going to create. So I'm skipping the map. Um, I'm also going to skip all of these form elements for the moment because um, we want in our project to be able to, for example, to for the user to give us feedback, but we're going to get to that later in a more efficient way. So these form elements I'm going to skip, and I will add this grid. This is pretty useful. This is a way to, design, to divide up the screen. Like if you had experience in classic web design when we used tables to divide up our screen, nowadays we don't use tables anymore. But we've got this grid that will let us divide the screen into columns and rows. So I'm going to drag a grid just anywhere into your design here, at the bottom if you can, but just anywhere. As long as it's not inside of another element, just drag it outside. And right there I have a simple two-column design. I can give myself more rows and columns right here, and then when we download it and examine the code, we'll see how to code it ourselves. And so this is enough for the moment. Before anything happens, I want you to click on the download button at the top right corner. Your web browser may ask you, what would you like to do with the zip file? Or it may simply download. So save that zip file on your desktop, preferably your flash drive. So we're going to download a copy of the zip file. Mine downloaded to the desktop, but then I'm going to copy it to my flash drive. Um, sure. I'll put it in there too. All right, so I put a copy of that on the network as well. And uh, what we want to do with that after you've downloaded it is you want to extract it. 
but we, because we cannot edit the code at the moment. It's, it's in the zip file. It's compressed. If you don't know, a zip file is a way to take a bunch of files and tie them together and send them all at once as a bundle. But in order to actually then use the files, we have to unzip, uncompress, extract them. So I've copied the zip file to my flash drive, or if you don't have one on your desktop, and you want to right-click the zip file, you should have Extract All. So on your zip file, you want to right-click Extract All, and it'll say, where would you like to extract this to? I'm going to let it extract to my to my flash drive. And to click uh, Extract. And so now on my flash drive, it created a folder called Kodika App, whatever, and inside of that is mobile website, and inside of mobile website is all of the code that made up my project from Kodika Prototypes. So let's take a break up to this point to see if everyone's on the right track. What you want to do before the, you come back from the break is you want to make sure you've, you've designed this basic app like I did. You want to download your zip file and extract your zip file. When we get back, We'll see what we got, and we'll get into Notepad, and then we'll, we'll keep going. It's about 7.20-ish. We'll be back at 7.30.